Welcome back to the Straight Bats. We're going to have a good look at the uh, Hurley Zakaba women's first grade and also the second grade. And we've got our special guest, Joe Cook from Ranello. How are you this evening? Yeah, good. Thank you, guys. Good to be here. Excellent. Thanks for thanks for coming in. And um, I guess it's a bit about your cricket journey and how you got involved in cricket and how you uh, ended up playing down at Ranello. Yeah, it's... Uh I'll keep it as a short story. I did start playing cricket a long, long time ago, yep. um, mid eighties, I guess. Um, junior went through uh, the ranks, played at Adelaide University, as yep. it turns out, uh, for some years there, and left the game at about twenty five, okay. uh, about nine, ten seasons in, and walked away. And uh, my niece actually plays down at Ranella, and of course you go out and support. Yep, and. Uh, then it's, oh, honey, Joe used to play. <laughs> Next week, we're really sure. Okay, yeah. And um, that was in 2018. I've been filling in ever since. So, um, And she's actually not playing at the moment. She's gone and uh, had a little bub. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so had a big break in between uh, walking away and, and coming back and, and loving it. So. You're going pretty well. So we'll Boy. get to the stats a bit later. But I see you featuring quite high up there. So You yeah. must be enjoying it, mate. <laughs> yeah. Some it's, strong stats there. Uh, yeah, I, the, I love the game. It's it's um, something I probably regret walking away from. Um, and to have the opportunity to get back and still physically be able to get through has been great. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay. And... Um, I guess the growth of women's cricket in general seems to be going from strength to strength, not only at turf level, but on a national and state stage. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, nine years for the WBBL. I think mm. they're in the ninth season and uh, and that's fantastic. And I, I certainly remember when that first hit the screens and uh, lots of texts going back and forth to the you know old mob that have been playing and um, it's just fantastic the opportunities mm. that are available to yep. the girls and women now. Mm. Those of us who've played for a long time, back in the day, um, cricket's been around forever. Yep. Um, but we're bringing in a lot of new people to the game and, and I think it's fantastic that young girls can see how it's played, see where there's mm -hmm. um, a place to go with their game. Yep and really inspire them to, to get in and make the most of, of their sport. I yeah. think I think the game's improving greatly, and it's I think the main reason is because they're starting younger and they're Absolutely. getting a bat ball in their hand, and it's not, not taboo, but, you know, you not have to play with the boys. Sure. You know, there's a lot of girls out there now doing that, and the same as the other sports, AFL, and, and mm -hmm. what you look at traditionally, I suppose, you know, when a young girl growing up, you know, you have your softball maybe and, and netball, Whatever girls never kicked a footy. Now you see these ones coming through. They're kicking the ball beautiful, and and, and, and that's the key. The the, the, uh, the difference is they're getting the opportunity at a younger age and learning those basic skills. We see it in the in the comp now in women's first grade with the young kids that I, I say young kids they are to me. They well they are too. They're probably what nineteen twenty maybe younger uh, coming through, and their skills are outstanding. And you wouldn't see that. That you that would be the exception. Now it's starting to become the rule with the players. Yeah. I mean, the WBBL one to like this yeah, year's tournament. Amazing. Just the yeah. the difference is, you know, we might have had a little giggle back then, but now there's some good cricketers. Yeah. And I look at Adelaide Turf in the men's T20 Div Three. Kensington has a, a women's team that play in there, and I know last year they beat Unley. Yes. And the boys go and they just go and. Um, one of the girls there was ramping the opening bowler. Yes. I think she made 80 or something, and they just go, wow, like, hits Absolutely. the ball well and, and yeah. plays really well. It's a great eye opener. Yes. <laughs> and Jamie Pennelly was just steering him in the right <laughs> path yeah, there. Sure I mean, was. what a great cricketer he is as well. But yeah, yeah. it was it was really it's good to see. You ruining your reputation tonight. You're speaking too much sense. I don't it's know Christmas, man. I'm on holidays. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and Joe, we had, we had Richard Gabin early in the season, and we also had Karen Smith from Sturt, and they both mentioned how good Ranella are to play against and how big they are in the spirit of cricket. Is that a big focus down at Ranella? It is. Yeah. Um, Jewel certainly, um, the press certainly pushes that. Um, mm -hmm. The club's won it a f for a few years. Yeah. And we certainly um, buy into that culture with the women's teams. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, competitive, are we? For yeah. sure. We want to win. Mm. We're not going out there for um, for a laugh. Um but there's ways you can go about that, yep. and uh, we also, you know, we have a lot of fun amongst our team, yep. and never take ourselves too seriously. But we're also well aware that, um, you know, you don't take any pride in in demoralising a, a young mm -hmm. yep. person that's yep. coming out, and and we do our best to be competitive and not give them an inch. But we're we're still aware that you know you don't want to spoil their experience of the game. Fantastic. 
we might have a look at, um, I guess, round 10 of the women's first grade and go through the results. So Adelaide, 4 for 74. Armstrong, 26, defeated Brighton, 4 for 73. So any comments about those two sides? I think Adelaide will be up and down this year, depending yeah. on, I know they've had um, some issues with uh, consistency with getting players. So mm -hmm. um, I know they had a couple of forfeits early, but they get themselves right and, and they could be for the second half the danger. Brighton, we haven't played yet, although I might have to check that. My memory's shocking. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think they might have beaten us. So I think that might be why I said okay, they didn't play us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, a, a team of, of good young cricketers. Yeah. And um, Adelaide probably a bit strong with um, with uh, the, the, the older people in that side. So yeah. Yeah. both both will be around the mark this year. Okay. West Torrens, 4 for 109, had a good win in its pain, 7 for 75. So Emily Parsons... 46 and Cadence Murdoch 19 and 3 for 14. So West Torrens playing some good cricket. Another good side of young yep. young cricketers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have played them. Again, great skills, young, um, keen, yep. and um, paying them a bit of a mix of young and old there, and they're probably a bit disappointed to fall short in that game. Yeah, okay. Now, Parra Hills, 6 for 264, defeated Adelaide University. The standout here, obviously, Tamara Clapton with 170, 28 fours and two sixes off 71 balls. So what can you tell us about her? She's obviously batting in, in rare form. Yeah, the um, what's missing on, on your sheet here, Raj, is the red ink. That was 170, <laughs> okay. that was 170 yep. not yep. out, yep. just to uh, improve Tamara's average. Mm. She's uh, a talent. Absolute talent. Yep. Um, with Paraka uh, moving on this year, tomorrow's come across to Para Hills and and makes a big difference to that side. Uh, very long day in the field, even yeah, though twenty sure. overs. If you have someone can't get <laughs> yeah. around like oh. that, um, value for runs at Adelaide Uni. I think that was played at. Yeah, she's a class. She makes Para Hills uh, a team and a half. Mm. Once she gets going, she's pretty hard to stop. So. Yep, and you guys, Ronella, one for sixty nine, had a good win against her, six for sixty seven. So you got thirty, and Vlachos twenty eight, Doyle two for eleven, Castanelli two for seven. So you'd be happy with that win going into the break. We were pleased. We were, we always have some great comps mm -hmm. against Sturt, and I think uh, Karen alluded to that a couple of weeks ago. They have had, a, I think, a turnover of players feeding up in into their um, Premier cricket, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, that game really does, you know, we would never take that lightly. Um, yeah. We got uh, an opportunity to put, uh, put them in and I think we got the better of the conditions. Even okay. though it hadn't rained, I think things were still a, a little bit damp, the yeah. grass was a bit long and, and um, yeah, we just sort of crafted our way slowly to get that target. Yeah, okay. So if we have a look at the stats, I guess, at the first half of the season and Tamara Clapton, obviously that 170, she's 491 runs at the... Measly average 164. So yourself, Joe, uh, 240 run runs at 48. So a solid second. Then we've got Kylie Rattray from Adelaide, 235 runs at 117. Melissa Fanning from Paynham with 200 runs. Emily Parsons, 173. Bree Marziali from Paynham, 159. Sarah Meagle from Sturt, 148 runs. Mia Landrigan from Brighton, 132. Kate Evans from Paynham with 121. And Kat Blahos from Ronella. 103. So obviously yourself and Tamara well out in front, but there's been some strong performances from uh, all the clubs really in, in, with the batsmen. Oh, I think the the key with with any side in T20 is someone can just get going, mm -hmm. and then obviously the the, the those that they're batting with need to support that and make sure they get on strike. And it's quite an art to do that. Make sure the batter that, that's going, um, and those scores there in you know in a 20 over comp. Yeah, I'd assume most of those are openers because you get the best mm. opportunity. So isn't yep. that the best yep. stop uh, yep. spot to bat? Is that where you bat, Joe? Yes, you it the top? is. Of course, yep. it is. <laughs> <laughs> did, you take the, did you take the first ball? Uh, not this week. No, uh, we had a bit of a change of plan. Um, normally, I do, um, but we we had a different strategy against Sturt and started off with one of our uh, our Claudia, our quick bowler. Okay. Um, Young Claudia and a uh, a bit of a turner at the, from the other end. Yeah. Nice little slow uh, offies, I think she bowls. And that certainly worked in our favour. So uh, So what do you like taking the first ball? When I when I bat. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. What, uh, because the others don't. Yeah. <laughs> but I always work on the fact, and I try and tell them this when you're batting, you want, you may be nervous, but don't forget the person at the other end who's yeah. got to bowl the first ball. 
is just as nervous. I reckon, so, yeah, I reckon Justin Langer said he liked taking the first ball in test matches because the bowlers warming up. Yeah. So you get you get the first cider instead of getting it. Yes. And that's how I, not that I've ever opened him a lot. I've tried to open a few times, but I'm more you're, of a number You're over. unlucky yes. to get a Jaffa first ball of the game, I well, would say. But yeah. It can happen, you though. You can, absolutely, <laughs> and yeah. it makes for a long day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I've got the same. Take the first ball, they're nervous. You might get a, a nice, uh, you know, full, push it away, Take a single, yeah. and it doesn't matter anymore, does it? You're off strike. Well, modern yeah. game, wouldn't you reverse sweep first ball? Oh. No, I haven't tried one yet, <laughs> and I, 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 don't, I don't want to really take on anything new. It's hard enough doing what I've been doing for years. So, fantastic. And you got a few um, bowlers performing well as well. So Tamara Clapman's topping the bowling as well. Seventeen wickets um, at uh, at a very good average. Um, Cadence Murdoch from West Torrens has got 12 wickets. Grace Flanagan from Brighton, 11. Jessica David, Paynham, 10. Serena Slade from Parry Hills, 9. Um, Samantha Tamita from Paynham with 9. Meg Fidan from Sturt with 8. And then Elkie Jarvis from Ronella with 7. Jessica Murray, Paynham with 6. And Claudia Castanelli with 6. So um, Tamara Clapton obviously bowls okay as well. What can you tell us about her bowling? And then a couple from your club, Elkie Jarvis and um, Claudia Castanelli, okay. not going too badly. Yeah, Tamara... Um yeah, she's reasonably quick um, for that at that level, mm-hmm. but certainly has the ability to move the ball both ways. And I yep. think that's where a, a mm-hmm. few come un- yep. unstuck that you don't generally see a lot of movement off the seam, but she certainly has mm-hmm. the ability to do that. And, I, and I'm not surprised. You see her best bowling there, six for three. That she, yep. she picked up a, a few weeks ago. So she's yep. having a crack at you. Mm-hmm. No question about that. Uh, for, for our team, Elkie, uh, she comes from a volleyball background okay. and learning the game. Yep. And uh, has has given a role to to learn how to bowl, and she's starting to get reward for that. Yeah, uh, Claudia, I'll say young Claudia. I think she's twenty. She's been with us for about four years. Okay, and um, now starting to get quicker as she's getting a bit stronger and and maturing more. Yeah, um, and she's been a, an absolute delight to uh, to show the game, and she's starting to learn the the finer nuances of bowling and and working out how to get batters out. So. So do you think at Power Hills is a bit of a tussle there? The king of Power Hills, Trav Wordsworth, <laughs> he's going to uh, get dethroned. I think you might. I think there might yeah. be a, a queen might <laughs> be in struggle. charge at Power Hills now. <laughs> I think so. bit of a queen tomorrow, hey? Yeah, that's right. Are they the team to beat this year, Power Hills? Absolutely. Yep. I don't. I don't want to put the mocker on them. I'm pretty sure they haven't lost yet. Hmm. <clears throat> so they are, they absolutely will be the ones to beat, and I think they'd be looking looking at the season and saying, well, if we if we don't play in a grand final, if not win it, mm-hmm. then they'd probably be disappointed. Yeah, okay. Well, you sort of look at that, and obviously Tamara's had a great year. You can't rely on one player, yep. and he takes one ball. That's so true. I don't know if the others have had much of a hit at all, and that, that does happen. You, mm. You've seen that dominant through the period and, and whatever. You get put on a wet track, as an example, first ball nips off and sure. suddenly... Game on. Yes. <laughs> I, and I would certainly wouldn't sit here and say, no Tamara, no Para Hills. Um, I think that doesn't do the other players in the team justice. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tamara certainly wouldn't want to be carrying the pressure if, if she fails, everyone goes down with her. Um, I think there's still plenty there that are capable of, of putting a good sto- score on the board regardless. If someone's getting 170 every week, well, you probably would think you'd pack up and let them do it, wouldn't you? But, um, you know, that was obviously a, a, a dream innings and can she repeat that? I hope not against us. <laughs> And we might have a bit of a look at the the second grade as well. There's yeah. been some good performances there. Becky Havis from Port Adelaide leading there with 288 runs at 96. Um, Tina Lester from Woodville South, 181 at 63. Um, Emily Roberts from the Falcons, 160 at 32. And on the bowling, a couple of Hope Valley bowlers. Ella Jolly with um, 11 wickets, an average of four. Isabella Fields from Hope Valley, um, nine wickets at eight. And Sarah Noski from Woodville South, 10 wickets at 11. And... Um, from your club, we've got Ashley Carey, who has um, made 89 runs at 22. So a um, bit of a famous name there. What can you tell us about Ashley? Ashley, I can tell you uh, she's the, our second grade captain. Yep. Uh, she also keeps. And mm-hmm. um, she's well aware that she is the best keeper in the family. Right. Because um, obviously Alex, he's got a bit of work to do to catch up <laughs> to uh, to Ash's level. Okay. Sister, is it? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, Alex is uh, he's come out a couple of times a few games and uh, you know tries to go a little bit unnoticed but uh, a nice guy and we've had a few team photos with him <laughs> okay. so it's fantastic. Yeah. She gloves the ball quite nicely, does she? 
Ash can get onto a few, I can tell okay, you. I yep. think she actually hit um, in her innings just gone uh, last week. She made 22 to win the game and hit all fours. Yeah, okay. So so she all kitted out in the kookaburra gear? <laughs> eh? Yes, we've had a few uh, a few th- items filter down. I actually hear from time to time a couple of players putting in orders. Uh, well, you know, when can we get something next and stuff like that. So I, I'm not sure if Alex is actually aware when Ash goes through his gear, but I'm sure he doesn't miss it. Uh, well, Kookaburra, great brand, great sponsor Definitely. of uh, Adelaide Turf Absolutely. been for a long time. Yes. So it's good to see when uh, good players use the gear as well. Yeah. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. And um, down at Ranella, there's obviously a few volunteers behind the scenes that keep things ticking over. Everyone, Anyone that you'd like to mention that uh, is keeping things running down there? Oh, look, I'd, I'd hate to to, you know, name one, name two and miss out five. Yeah. Um, there's a great mob in the kitchen uh, on every Thursday night, put on a meal for all the players, uh, all volunteers uh, behind the bar as well. Johnny Dean spends a, um, a long lot of hours behind the bar. Yeah. He's not a young man. And um, he, I think he's part of the furniture there. He likes to chat, doesn't he? He likes to chat. I've had a few pints there. I don't mind beer on tap down there. Yeah, it goes okay. It goes <laughs> he look, okay. He looks after you. Yeah, but uh, you know, like any community club, it is the the volunteers that put in a lot yep. of work. Yeah. And may go unnoticed from time to mm. time. And we had actually quite a um, big function there on Sunday. We had the kids prezos, mid year prezos, uh, all the all the teams down there. And uh, they said they did over 170 meals, so you know um, that's a lot of work mm. in the kitchen for the uh, for the volunteers. That's massive. That's why we would do that every Friday night with their juniors. They're just wow. flying like that club at, at there, mm. and they just get there. Yeah, they do yeah. up to 200. I yeah. reckon Karen mentioned as well that the Ranella girls don't mind a drink. She said that there's no way Sturt could, would, could compete with the Ranella girls at the bar. So who's oh, who no. are the who are the standouts there? Standouts. <laughs> at, well, where do we start? Um, <laughs> Uh, courageously led by the captain Brooke Turner, I think um, <laughs> she she uh, revs us up and and keeps uh, keeps us in line as far as uh, hurry up and it's your shout. <laughs> um, a few new couple of new girls that have come into the second grade, Jess Armstrong and um, Alicia Lou Laurie. I think they keep uh, keep John busy and up and back <laughs> from the bar. So um, you know it, it gets hot. I think the best thing about um, <laughs> cricket in the warm, you come into the nice yep. air conditioned club rooms, the beer's cold. The air's cold, the company's good. <laughs> we can all tell each other how good we were on the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sounds fantastic. Sounds Enjoying your cricket on and off the field, Dan and Ella, which is great. Yeah, for sure. Brilliant. Shall we rip into the bad minute, Was What about the funniest teammate at Ranella? Funniest teammate, I'd say the captain, Brooke Turner. She'll love that. <laughs> Best bowler you've faced this year? Oh, look, it's hard to pick one, and, and I I could have researched a lot for you, but I'm, I'm going to put it there that Brighton – and West Torrens, the bowlers they've got down there that they're working with um, are up and comers and uh, they keep up the good work because as those girls age, they're going to be good, good bowlers to look out for. Okay, Joe, what about best batsman in the women's comp? That might uh, be... Uh, best bat in the women's comp. <laughs> what about... Yeah, Tamara. Can't go past Tamara. Any up, <laughs> in an, any up and comer that we might have missed? Oh, look, I don't, I don't know. Are they, get, are they getting the opportunities um, to... to make big scores yeah you know you look through the list that you had there's there's probably a few that we're we're blinded by the lights of of um tamara's recent form Mm. but uh was who's who's there in your in your 200 there's a name there from Paynham, um melissa fanning i I, i'm not aware of that name and i don't know if she's new to the club, but there's uh, there's probably someone there to keep an eye on. Yeah. Well, yeah. You called her Meg last week, I reckon. So uh, <laughs> that was you actually. But uh, yeah. we'll just go back to the tape. <laughs> hey, we'll get that one up, and you'll be uh, very upset. I might be apologising next you week. You will be, but okay. Now she seems that her name's popped up a few times yeah. this year. But getting back to our mad minute that sure. always goes longer than a minute. <laughs> sure. um, who's the team to beat? Uh, Parrot Hills, absolutely. Yeah. What about your favourite cricketer? Uh, can't go past Shane Warne. Yep. Um, lived and breathed his career from start to finish, and and um, I don't think there's too many cricket lovers that wouldn't have shed a tear on the on the mm, sad day of his definitely. passing. Yeah, favorite all time sportsman or sports person? Sorry. Sports person. Yeah, I saw you said had sportsman on the thing you sent me, <laughs> and I thought we were going to be quite specific. But if we're going sports yep. person, uh, we're, we're looking at Lauren Jackson. Yeah. Okay. So still in the Australian team, I believe. Selected again. Selected so again. Fitness pending yeah. or health. Okay. And it's injuries pending. But if she gets back in that side, look out. That's just be good that's to have her around the team. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're a basketball fan. A uh, women's oh. basketball fan. Yep. Yeah. I yep. played uh, prior to 
playing cricket, played a bit of basketball. Yeah. So, yeah, tied up with Westies, uh, West LA Bearcats okay. back in the day. So. Oh, fantastic. Um, best ground in first grade cricket? Oh, you'd have to go your home ground, but I know, is that against the rules? Oh, uh, apart from Ranella. Uh, for the first grade they were playing, I, I quite like Paynham Oval. Yep. Um, for some reason, I just, uh, I, I don't, uh, you know, sometimes you go out to a deck and you stand there and you think, yeah, I, I feel really good here. Um, and Paynham certainly one of those, and I, th I think probably the nicest ground other than Ranella. They used to call it Duke's Highway back in the day. It was a belter of a wicket, but I think a yeah, bit of uh, football, rain, whatever else, yeah. uh, wickets most probably just... You Isn't know. that the love it had when uh, old Keefe was doing it? Back exactly. Back. Yep. Um, what's the best thing about Adelaide Turf Cricket? For the women's comp, I think yes. it's, it's the growth, definitely. Um, for Ranello, this is the first year we've had a second side, so we're really excited about that. And I just can't, and I, and I hear myself saying it over and over, but seeing that the, the young kids that come through um, and have an opportunity, they can, they can come in, get exposed to the game at a T20 level, community club level, if they are, you know, good enough and want to go on to to the other Premier Cricket, that's great. If not, they are, you know, they can still play. And I, I just think the women's game is is growing and growing. Keep a few of us oldies in there and, and guide the way, and, and we'll be yeah. going great. So you, you mentioned your growth, so just diversing a bit. Sure. Here, but the growth there, where did that come from? For Ranella? Yeah, for Ranella, yes. Yeah, look, last year we had probably one and a half teams. Yep. And um, we found we were, you know, week in, week out, we were sitting aside quite a few people. Um, and and that we, how do we get the rest? How mm -hmm. do we push that? And we didn't really do a lot. Um, we, we put some feelers out on, on social media and a few things out from, from the club down south and they, they came. Yep. So uh, we have a, a good, strong, solid 2022 um, the work commitments and things like that, as you know, in and out. Um, but we're really pleased and it's just a, a great bunch that have, have come together now to, to form a, form that full squad. Oh, that's really good. What about spirit of cricket? What about the spirit of cricket? <laughs> how important is it? Oh, oh, no, it just said spirit of cricket, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. How, how good is the spirit of cricket? Yep, in the women's comp. I reckon it's pretty good. Yeah, no, you touched on it earlier, I reckon, yeah, as well. you know, you um, yeah. we... Uh, we know how we want to play, yeah. Um, how the opposition plays up to them, um, but we will always bring our best un under the under the spirit and and the um, the way it's meant to be played. And Fantastic. Expected. What's the uh, one thing you're looking forward to most over the Christmas break? Boxing Day test. Yeah. Definitely. You got, a, um, you got a routine or a tradition? Oh, I'd be in front of the TV for the toss. I think that's it, and then uh, you know, work out how much time you got before before the first ball. <laughs> but that's about my tradition, and yep. you know, it's uh, it's not England, but it's Boxing Day, and um, we see you know, sit and what and eat all the leftover Christmas uh, goodies, mm -hmm. and uh, watch a bit of good cricket. Sounds good. Yes. Fantastic. Well, um, thanks very much for coming in, Joe, and telling us a bit about your cricket journey, about how things are travelling down at Ranella. Good luck for the second half of the year. Right. I'm sure you're going to take it up to Para Hills. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, we do have a, uh, a voucher for you to have a meal at, at Sporty. So um, you might want to take your Ranella teammates down there. It sounds like they'll spend a bit of money over the bar, but there's a $50 voucher there for you to have a meal and, and some drinks at Sporty's at the Arca Bar. That's so great. thanks, thanks so very much. much for coming in. And, um, yeah, good luck for the reckon, second right. half of the season. Thanks, so, guys. Joe trusts us. Yeah, she didn't open it like uh, another guest. <laughs> like he didn't. He didn't trust us. He checked if it was real. Oh, well, you just no. said there was a fifty dollar voucher in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. No. We'll see what it is when I get home. <laughs> we'll lock it up. Yeah, yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> anything. But uh, thank you very much. Yeah. That's our uh, uh, straight bat for the uh, for the women's competition and. And what have we got to look forward to next year was uh, hopefully David will be back in the studio to keep an eye on us. But apart from that, what, are, what else have we got planned for next year You're, as the uh, executive producer? Oh, executive <laughs> producer, please. Um, oh, are we going to let David back? Oh, I don't we'll know. see how we go. Yeah, we'll see what the I'm feedback is. I'm pretty relaxed is. without him telling me off and prodding me <laughs> all the true, time. But no, I, I think there's some things planned for next year. Obviously, it was uncharted waters for the association. We know we've got to look at a few things. We'll yep. try get a bit more... Uh, Marketing. Yeah, a bit more video footage maybe. Yeah, get yeah. that. Put some clips out there, promote the show better and maybe we get a couple of better hosts in. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we can only hope. But uh, thanks for watching Straight Bat this year and uh, we'll be back with uh, big and better things next year.
Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah.